What's going on, everybody? This is your boy, <laughs> King Gabriel. <laughs> and this is Queen Tina. Your, your mom, mom. <laughs> and, and today we are going to be talking about, well, probably what I'll, probably what we'll be telling our future kid about five, about five or ten years, how I met your mother. Yes. <laughs> you know, okay, so the story is, she was, is a, you know, she was brought up, um, uh, her father told her not to trust humans. <laughs> she disobeyed her father, came up to the surface, saved me from drowning, and then and sang to me. Then I wanted to find her, and we, it all ended where we fought a sea witch and lived happily ever after, and now we live in this house. <laughs> what he tried to say is we both saw a live-action Little Mermaid today, and, yeah. <laughs> and let's just say it was good. Oh, yeah. Yes. Well, that little, uh... That little joke intro of mine indicates how good it is <laughs> that we, we practically could be in it ourselves. <laughs> well, for anyone who haven't seen the live action Little Mermaid and you and you and you see in this video, don't don't see it because there'll be spoilers. So I yeah, go see I, the movie first. I, 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 so I, vo I so I'm telling you, do not watch this video if you have not seen the live action Little Mermaid. Yep. Yeah, go go watch that movie. Go watch the movie first uh, before seeing this video. Right. Um, so while we wait for you to do that, well, we're gonna we're gonna yes. go ahead and have some dinner. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Oh, uh, but anyway. <laughs> yeah, you clip off a bit and then come back. Yeah. yeah. Anyway. <laughs> this is just a warning. Yep. And speaking of spoilers, I definitely uh, did everything I could to stay. Uh, Cause you know I gotta be on that to you know upload stuff and everything uh but yeah i did try to i did stay away from like uh links of people talking about the movie so i could go in it uh with fresh eyes only thing only thing that that you know we've seen of course is obviously the trailers there was one thing that was that was seen before the movie came out uh it just popped up on google um a while back, um, people despising this rap number that does appear in there. We'll we'll met, we'll, we'll let you know when we get to it. Uh, get to talk uh, that point of talking about it. But yeah, people were despising of this rap that they've added to the movie. To which I say, what is the problem, y'all? People, uh, y'all, y'all haters act like y'all be so above different stuff. There, some of y'all, some some of y'all, like I say, like. Now, of course, like, you know, maybe, if, you know, okay, maybe some people don't like rap, but, um, but then, of course, there's some of y'all that's like, uh, they ain't gonna put rap in this stuff. It's almost like when Double Toasted was talking about Space Jam 2. Why they gonna rap in here? It's so cringing. <laughs> like, what's the... Really? And I fought the controversy between having a black actress as Ariel was worse. <laughs> Let's just say it, it, it's their decision that they can do whatever want, they want with live-action Disney remakes. Yeah. It's called creative freedom, and they don't have to go with the original all the time. They could mm -hmm. just have their their take on it. Right, and yeah, now I could now now of course something yeah I could definitely understand that maybe something like that wouldn't make sense. Like okay, like Black Panther, okay. That's set in Africa. Yes. So yeah, it would be kind of unusual um, that you would see a Caucasian person or an Asian person, uh, you know, or you know, walking around here, and now you be Black Panther. Yes. <laughs> they sort of did a joke of that in RDC world, huh? but but yeah, but I'm talking about but in the official film though. Yes. Yeah. Now I can understand something like that where it's supposed to be a certain way. Uh, for that particular story, but see, this this can work for the little mermaid because uh, these are magical beings. You know, yes. mermaids they're not. You know, they can be in. They could. Uh, their skin tone can be of any of any ethnicity. Not just skin tone, but also their tails in general. Right. They just just like sea creatures, they, they can be anything. Yeah, they don't necessarily have to abide by, you know, what we've. At, you know, here on the surface, have grown up with through the years and stuff like that. You know, different time periods of of our lives and stuff. Yes, or different locations. Exactly. Um, one of the reasons that was kind of impressive with the whole seven daughters of the sea that they mentioned in the movie. Yes. 
Um, to which I kind um, before going in the movie, I sort of was, I kind of was like, whoa, Triton, you got all these different uh, different uh, daughters here. <laughs> Uh, Dragon been getting around, but um, in a way, it could now. A uh, few theories behind uh, after seeing, you know, how this movie plays out, and you know, the dialogues and how the story carries out. Triton could have adopted all these girls um, as one big family, and yeah. maybe Ariel's mother is the birth mother. I mean, is is the uh, is like his official wife, obviously, and maybe Ariel was his only birth child, or being that if you go by the if you go by the logics, which they could be, of from dare I say Christian Hans, yes. where they do mention about them having longer lifespans, sort of like the Asgardians and Thor. Yes, maybe he could have had different relations. Because you know, if they live for hundreds of years, yeah, that would be ample time for trying a different relationship. But then, of course, that would beg the question of what happened to each mother. Mm -hmm. So, the logic I think I would go that I would go with. I don't know what the movie was intending for it to be. And they le they left it open, but the logic so the logic I would go with with the open door would be, yeah, tr um, part yeah. I said try and get around. But Triton could also be going by the Old Testament ways of how, you know, like King Solomon, uh, different kings like Solomon and um, Saul and all that way back in the Old Testament. Um, it was legit for them not to have more than one wives. Yes. Have some concubines. Right. They could, oh yeah, they could have multiple wives and concubines, you yeah, know, which um, pretty much translation in our what we would say girls on the side. But this was this was legit though. It wasn't his that was just kinda of the way it was in that time period with the kings and stuff, because that was how they their mindset and everything. Um so yeah, maybe that could have happened and uh that's why and I guess all these what though if it, if we go by that logic, yeah, he got a wife from each part of the sea. <laughs> yes, yeah, since they are King Triton's daughters of the seven seas, mm -hmm. and each of the daughters have their own sea to rule. It's like, it's kind of like they're princesses of the sea, right? So maybe so yeah. So I guess his multiple queens are stationed in different areas there, hmm. and yeah. And he, now he mentions about Ariel's mother being killed there, obviously, um, and of course that that's a little something that's taken from the third animated movie. Yes. Where they actually did, exp uh, it was only in that movie when we got to explain the animated version. So here we got we got it front and center. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. Her, her mother died. Yeah. <laughs> and you all also in the opening you get a good um, get kind of a dark end with the with the human world there. Yeah. Uh, they believe. They actually are aware that mermaids exist, but they think that the mermaids, that the merfolk, are out to get them. Uh, or as, or as the queen of this movie, that uh, Eric's mother, thinks the sea god, the gods are angry with us. Yes, mm -hmm. I know. At the beginning, the pir the pirates on the ship try to kill to see if there's any sirens that was something trying to kill them. And Eric, and Eric stop trying, and Eric stopping them, say, "What are you doing?" Mm -hmm. And turns out it was dolphins this whole time, even though, even though Eric doesn't want the want the mer people to get killed. Yeah, because um, one thing they really opened up with Eric in this with the way things are set up with the other people, yes. uh, wanting to extend out to other cultures, and in this case, other mythical. Uh, it's like he's an explorer. Yep, he's got he he wants. <laughs> And that was that's also I, I like I like that they did that because they really it really uh, strengthened the connection with him and Ariel since Ariel wants to explore the land he just wants to explore the sea right the sea as well as the world in general yes. yeah yeah just the whole wide world yeah. <laughs> land and sea <laughs> and he was 
And yeah, obviously, because of the fact that his people keep mentioning about, you know, the sea gods and stuff. And yeah. The sirens killing right. humans. So obviously he wants to see, well, what's the good what 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 good can I find down there? Y'all all telling me about the bad stuff. I wanna see the good. Sort of sort of like in real life us seeing the good in these live action movies that so many people see the bad in. <laughs> There's no saying the good outweighs the bad. Yep. Oh, and speaking of that, before we go too far into this, there, um, give a little, uh, give a shout out to today's uh, sponsor for this, uh, for this review. Um, since this is, since uh, it was this sponsor, this uh, this sponsor was given uh, to uh, was sent to us uh, earlier this week. So, putting it in this review, uh, Hunter McLeaton. From uh, from Kroger, from Master Road Kroger, old boy Hunter, and say one of our co-managers there, uh, the youngest one up there. Uh, also, uh, I think when DC when DC does their reboot, you know, after the Flash movie, uh, well, we might have to find somebody to take Hunter's place at Kroger because <laughs> they're they're gonna they're gonna need a new Flash, <laughs> and uh, yeah, uh, yeah, they might. Yeah, we might have to, might talk Hunter into submitting his himself for being the new Flash. Yes. <laughs> yeah, he he say he are he already claimed himself to be the Flash at work. <laughs> yeah, I'm super fast. <laughs> so shout out to Hunter McLean. Yeah, uh, A.K.A. possible new Flash. <laughs> mm. I bet he wishes to be the new Flash. I would. I wish for that too. <laughs> yes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. He look. He look like he make a good flash there. Since he's younger. Mm hmm. He kind of got the attitude like Flash. So, yep. So there you. So, yep. Appreciate the appreciate your sponsorship there. So. So uh, now go back into this. Uh, yeah, I like it in the mm -hmm. beginning. You can see Ariel collect her tre treasures starting to collect her treasures and then going inside the shipwreck and encountered by the sharks when the original is start off with introducing the daughters of Trident by something song mm -hmm. and knows that Ariel is missing and then they show her finding her human treasures in an abandoned shipwreck and being encountered by the shark. It's almost like they do scene swaps. Yeah, they sort of, um, in a way, and they also seem like they kind of were making things a little more serious, especially with Triton, uh, a lot because of what we see with the humans, you know, how they perceive merfolk there. Yeah, I noticed in, in, the, in, in the beginning, you don't see the daughters of Triton introduce themselves in, the, in song in the live action version. They just, they just go to a, a, a specific meeting. It's yeah. almost like... Uh, Almost like they about to meet up for battle, almost. Yes. Or, yeah, they, yeah it's pretty much like a survival. <laughs> yeah, I think they mentioned about the court. They mentioned about the moon having a meeting like every every full moon. Oh. Or moon. Yeah, so. Yes. Mm. And I guess they. So I guess where they've been is I guess around these different seven seas, possibly with their mothers or. Maybe they actually are ruling them. Oh. It's good. Uh, go. It's never. It's never stated how old the other daughters are. Um, yeah, they state that they're they're all older. The older sisters of Ariel. Yeah. And so by the way, their facial look, they look like they almost the same age as Ariel. By the way, their faces look. Hmm. Yep. But if we go by the logic of magical beings living the same lifespan, like Thor, could remember. Thor in I think Infinity War mentioned he was like over a hundred some years. Yeah. Despite the fact that he looked like he in his thirties or something. Yeah. So yeah, they could be if we go by that logic, yeah, they could be a lot older than they look. Uh remember uh, remember the elves and Santa Claus, they yeah. and Tim Allen Santa Claus, they look like little kids but uh but they were like hundreds of years. Yeah, the way the mer people move at a distance. Especially way out of distance reminds me of the movements from Avatar. Oh yeah. The way they move. Oh, which one? Like, like the Avatar movies, like all the mer people. The are you, they, wait, wait, are you, you t 
Well, when I say which one, I mean, you're talking about the blue cat people or the... Yeah, the blue cat people. Oh, okay. okay. But, in a di but in a different array of colors. Okay. When they move at a distance, uh, it's almost like they blend it in with the other fish. Like, you, you cannot hardly tell if they're mer which ones are the mer people and which ones are the sea creatures. Mm -hmm. Because they show them quickly at a distance, and they swim fast at a distance. Yeah, and if they swim for survival, yeah, that would explain why they swim so fast. Yeah, and they move like actual fish. Mm. Yeah, that is an impressive feat with the movie to actually incorporate these kind of things in them. Yes. Uh, they must, they probably, I'm pretty, with all the people that were in those credits, we saw a lot of people when the credits came up. As I, my, my assumption is like, it took like over, I would say over, bet between over 100 people to even a thousand people working this movie. Crew members. And I bet you several of those people had to really study the ocean life of, like, like how different sea creatures swim and all that. To Doing their research. Right, to really bring this to life there. Yeah. That's why, that's why, like I say, with these, uh, to a lot of these people that's, you know, hating on these live action. Now, yes, I will admit, in my opinion, I'm not too fond of Beauty and the Beast live action because uh, of certain things in there and the creepy furniture. Yes. And um, there's, now, there's some things in that I like, but... Yeah, it's sort of like I, I, it's, it's like the Scooby Doo move, live action movie to me. You know, I, you know, I'm not. I do, um, I know in Brandon's reaction, now I was trying to be all like, oh, I'm so angry, but yeah, you know, it's just you know, it's just things I don't like in that there. Maleficent, I now Maleficent, I probably would hate that with a passion. <laughs> yes, yeah, because the main focus is on the villains that sleep in beauty. Exactly, and it's and it is um and even. Even if you, even if the effects are good in the movie, that story just turns me off. <laughs> Especially Maleficent raising sleeping beauty. You right. know, Maleficent's, Maleficent's supposed to be the enemy. Yeah, why would she waste her time raising sleeping beauty? Yeah, that's, yeah. But, She's supposed to be against sleeping beauty. Yeah, but like I say, that's in my opinion, just to those two movies, and surprisingly, Maleficent was part of the inspiration for Descendants. Even. Go figure. Um, I do like the sentence, but surprising that that was that it took that to get those movies. Yes. <laughs> but um, but all the other live action remakes, um, Aladdin, Pinocchio, this one, Lion King, uh, and um, possibly others that I have yet to see. Yeah, I'm good. Yeah, I mean they do really great job, and like I say, it's not to say like. Oh well, let's let's have the live action and just forget about the animated. As Hannah Montana say, we have the best of both worlds now. We we've had a, we've gotten original animated movies, you know, to give us temp. Because it was because of those movies that the people nowadays have templates, you know, when they go to make these live action remakes. Yeah, I've heard rumors that they're gonna have a live action Snow White movie next year. Well, hmm, that probably, that might be pretty good. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Oh, and also live action Mulan, yeah. And boy, I had some people that I, I had some uh, friends of mine that, yeah. that that was that that thought I was that thought I lost my mind when I said, "Okay, so what's wrong with Mulan? It looks good to me." Hmm. Gabe, what? They all, well, I don't I don't know which one they thought I was crazier on that or G Force. <laughs> Mm. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Appar appar apparently, to some people of my of the movies that I have an interest in, apparently in some people's perspective, I'm a big cuckoo cuckoo. <laughs> yeah. Maybe several years from now, they might do a live action Princess and the Frog, and possibly oh, a they, live action Frozen. Wait, wait. I think they've done Princess and the Frog. I think it's on. It. I think they may have. Oh, I, it may be available now mm. on viewing. On Disney Street. Plus, yeah, but it, I haven't seen it. Okay, yeah, neither have I, but I, but yeah, I recently heard about it. Too bad it wasn't released in the theaters like all the other live action films. But would be nice. Yeah, by yeah, probably uh, probably check that out at some point there. Um, and I think they also have live action Lady and the Tramp somewhere, somewhere in the gallery. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, like I say, 
I the way I look at it is it's just best of both worlds and I and, and I do understand people, you know, that say, Well well Gabe, you know, I just I just like the animated better, it's the original 'cause I mean I have a friend of mine at work, um, Russell, who's like, you know, well he and, and he um and he doesn't really, uh, he doesn't speak like ill will of the live action. It's, it's just it's, he just likes the animated better because in general he's passionate about things that are animated. So and yeah, that's that's, under, that's that's very understandable. You know, if you're especially you passionate about something, yeah, obviously you're gonna like it better. <laughs> yes, with animation there are no limitations. Mm -hmm. Like you could do whatever you want when you're animated. Right, <laughs> but it's. But yep, yeah, but it's but the um, but the way I see it, you know, it's it's good. To, um, and I I do yeah I, I strongly agree with what he say on the animated stuff. But I um, but there are some things that you can have both ways. Cause yeah, some things that are animated that don't even work in live action at all. Yes. And then you got some things in live action that may not trans. Man may not work so well with animation. Maybe it's actually better live action. Just all depends on what it is. But but and other things. Same goes with other things are better and like better animated. Mm hmm. And then, and now you got cases like these Disney remakes that you know you put a, you give it a good story. Yeah, you can get you can get the best of both worlds. Yeah. Um, and Disney movies as well as even. Like our superhero films, the MCU and the Marvel, both animated and live action films. Yeah. You see how that worked out. A lot of y'all pretty much uh, have praised the MCU from Iron Man to Endgame. Yeah. <laughs> and Spider and the Spider Man film. So <laughs> we saw how good that worked, <laughs> as well as other movies that aren't even in the MCU. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, <laughs> it's just all in how they're made, you know. <laughs> Yeah, so, uh, but yeah, the only thing my only my my only issue is when they have when when they hate it to the point where they try to convince other people, no, stick with the animated. Don't you dare go see that live action. Like, people, don't 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 do that. Like I say, don't discourage. Right. See, like I say, in my opinion, I'm not too fond of Maleficent and the live action Super Beauty. I Miss mean, uh, Beauty and the Beast. Yes. But, I mean, yeah, I, I talked to somebody who actually, you know, enjoyed it, um, enjoyed those movies for whatever reason. I mean, okay, that's the, you know, that's them, you know. The, uh, every movie got to have its audience. <laughs> hmm. Even, even, even if it is a really, even really bad movies, get me, don't get me wrong. You get, as a, uh, now how big some of the audience may be, I don't know, but. I say even something as bad as a uh, food fight probably has its audience. Yeah. Maybe a small one, but they're, they're there. <laughs> and I know most of the internet is talking about the food fight movie. Mm, yeah. With this bad CGI. And they pay like over $60 million for that movie, you know, despite being the CGI being terrible. Mm. And, has a, and have a limited release. No wonder it bombed. Yep. So. Yeah, like I say, <laughs> yeah, we can share what we like and dislike, but please don't discourage other, uh, don't try to, and to say, make other people pretty much wire them like, like you. <laughs> yes, yeah, their decision is their own, like right. their mind is their own. Yeah, I, I express some things passionately as well, but I mean, <laughs> I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna grab somebody by that, by that shirt and say, don't go see that. <laughs> Metaphorically speaking. <laughs> yeah. I like the part in the live action version when they made Scuttle not only just female, but also the ability to swim and be on oh, land at the yeah. same time. Yeah. Like, she, get, a... like she can't be adapted to, adaptable to both worlds, it's land and sea. That's actually pretty interesting because I think you prob I think in real life you probably, I think there are some, uh, not just ducks, but you have some birds that could just. Yeah. Swoop under there. Yes. Like Can also that. swim. Mm hmm Yeah, you probably have some birds with that ability. Yes, to go in underwater. For short periods of time, yeah. Yes. Yeah, so that was that was an interesting feat there. Uh since she's since she's female in this movie. She's was, like a sassy female. Yeah, and, and also she is uh her actress is a rapper. 
Uh, so yeah, we we'll get to that in a minute. Uh, yeah, she's the one that does the rap. Yes. Um, it would have been interesting if uh, yeah, the actress did a real good job. Of, you know, uh, a what if? Yes. It would have. It would have been. <laughs> what if she was played by Raven Simone? Oh yeah. <laughs> Hey girl, oh, oh, let me, oh, I can't put my finger on it. What, what you got different? What you get your hair done? You been using that dingle hopper, haven't you? You got, let me, see, you got, the, you got it going on with that girl. Yeah. <laughs> she got legs, you idiot. <laughs> hey, hey, I was get, hey, I was getting there. Don't be calling me no idiot. Don't be calling. Well, we gonna have, we gonna have some issues. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So. And another another reason I mentioned Raven Simone because if you uh, anybody who's listened to the Little Mermaid soundtrack from the animated movie, yeah, yeah, you they have a Under the Sea of uh, Raven Simone version, <laughs> yeah, the, and she she I I think Raven Simone really captivates a is a um, a female it's almost like a female version of how Sebastian sings it, yeah, yeah, she captivates that um, that style there. They, 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 that goes to in that bowl. Yeah. I noticed in when Ariel sings "Part of Your World," she reminds me of Janet Jackson when she sings. Oh, really? Which, yeah, reminds me of Janet Jackson, especially when she push when she put her anger in that song, like because she's fed up with her own world that she wants to explore outside outside of the world, which is the world of being being human mixture of sadness and anger more emotion I really like the um, more emotion in a different style too yes Jody Benson's style um, really cl uh, cl classic obviously uh, being that you know it was you know animated for the little kitties G rated her uh, her style of, of delivering her emotion was like a small child. Uh, like a small, like like a small child delivering that, yeah. And like you mentioned about the anger with yeah. Haley Berry, yeah. Def, uh, she uh, she really went into that teen. That's I mean, you know, cause, cause you got some teens that do come off sounding like little kids there, yes. Um, like really young and stuff, but she came off like that. Like, daddy, I want to get out there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can imagine Haley Berry playing Janet Jackson if they doing a if they doing a biopic about Michael Jackson. Think she could pull it off? Yeah. Hmm. You gotta, gotta got a resemblance to Janet Jackson there. Yeah, all they need to do is find an, an actor who resembles Michael Jackson. Sort of uh sort of like how they got Jamie Foxx to play Ray Charles. Yeah. And I see her being released in the theaters. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that could work, yeah. See what she can yeah. yeah, see what she can do. Make it about it'll be about his entire life through through his beginnings to how he died. Mm -hmm. I know it'll be lengthy. Mm -hmm. Yep, from uh, Janet with Janet Jackson in your main front. There. Yes. <laughs> yep. Some people speaking of uh, that, some people were thinking she was Holly Berry. <laughs> Yeah, have that mixed up because her, her, her name, name, yeah. Yeah, and the same initial. Halle Berry is playing the Little Mermaid. They get it mixed up. Who's who's next, Beyonce? Wow. What? It wouldn't surprise me if, she, if the, her actress was named after Halle Berry. Mm -hmm. Who knows? I just, had a, I just had a thought when I mentioned Beyonce. Yeah. Beyonce is the Little Mermaid and Jamie Foxx being her prince. Yeah. When I first saw you. Do a dream girl reference there. Yeah. <laughs> oh boy. That, that would be pretty interesting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But Beyonce did get to play Nala for the Lion King though. Oh. So so yeah, we did get that. <laughs> yeah. Although uh got to be with uh uh from he was also in Spider Man, uh Yeah. That, that uh the guy that played Simba. Yeah. I forgot his name. Uh, oh, Donald Glover. Yeah, Donald, Donald Glover. Yeah. <laughs> so, so yeah, we get pretty a lot. There's a lot that plays out 
pretty much like the animated movie, but of course they do some things differently, being adaptation. Yes. And yes, yeah, some things are added, like like we mentioned with the humans, you know, thinking that the sea gods are after them. Yes. Uh, of course, you get the scene of uh, under the sea. <laughs> yes, their take on it with realistic sea creatures. Which makes it look really beautiful, by the way. Yeah, and Ariel seen under the sea with Sebastian. Yeah, I like I like I like that little added twist there. Uh, it, the voices together uh, sounded really good there. Yes, a duet. Uh, especially the way she, the, uh, yeah, yeah, they, maybe you could, <laughs> yeah, you probably will sound better doing <laughs> under the sea. Under the sea. Yeah. Pretty much like that, 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 that high tone. There. Yeah. Under the sea. <laughs> yeah, like that. No fatty boys, pitos and nitos, all free Yeah. <laughs> just, Sebastian really went heavy on that Jamaican voice like his um like his predecessor there. Um God rest his soul, Samuel Wright. Like he brought his spirit into him. Yeah. Almost almost like Samuel took like his spirit took over him. Yeah. <laughs> he, to go like uh, like a Yu-Gi-Oh moment. Yes. <laughs> yeah. He still he did have his own flavor to it though. He did he did add his own flavor. But yeah, I I was really yeah I was really digging to out of the the way the, like him Flounder and Scuttle look. Yeah. Uh, all of them look look good by the way. I uh, yeah like I say I found the footage of Creepy and Beauty and the Beast, but. But yeah, these these weren't these designs weren't weren't really that bad there. Speaking of creepy, some people think that the live action Sebastian looks creepy, and the live action Flounder looks re way too realistic. Yeah, I don't th I don't think of them as creepy. Now the only only nitpick, just a nitpick. Yeah. That I would have with Flounder, maybe you know. Okay, I know you're going for realistic fish there. Yeah. And that's 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 fine. I know in, in the anime that, version the. Fl the Flounder looks chubby. Yeah, that maybe. Yeah, maybe. Pop, even if, even with being like a real fish body, yeah. uh, maybe you could, you know, give him the color scheme of the original flounder. Yeah, and like make him more yellow and blue, right? Him more brighter. Yeah, that's that's the only nitpick. Yeah. Yeah, but, his color scheme. Right, that's my only nitpick. But, but yeah, I didn't think it was creepy at all. The, uh, what we got though. Yeah. You know, and to say. Uh, yeah, he, yeah, he, he even gave him some good facial expressions, and like I say, Sebastian was the most impressive out of the main out of the main animals. Yeah, yeah, to, yeah. He, I, I sort of thought of him as a mini Kingler yeah. <laughs> from Pokemon, because one of his claws was bigger than the other. Yes, and which I think actual crabs in real life, that's that is kind of how they are. Yes, they they uh, you do have real crabs that are like that. Yeah, like one pincher is bigger than the other. And I think some people, I think uh, it's mentioned, I think he's supposed to be like a ghost crab or something like that. A ghost crab? Yeah, not not like an actual ghost, but th I think there is a crab that's just called that. Ghost crab. In, in real life. Um, you know, you get different kind of crustaceans there. Yeah. I think that's what they use for Sebastian's body um, to make him look somewhat close to the cartoon, but still like a real crab there. Yeah. Yeah, and they um also also uh, with the eyes positioned like a real crab, it also kinda of make you think of Mr. Cramps. Oh yeah, from SpongeBob. <laughs> uh <laughs> the, the, Oh my oh my I just thought of this. Yeah. Like, like, Alio, listen to me. Life but the DC is better than anything they got up there. <laughs> oh my goodness, Mr. Cramps singing that. Imagine Mr. Krabs walking on all fours. Possibly. <laughs> well, actually, he would need he would need more than just two legs because the pincers aren't actually legs. Like, I know. Yeah, yeah, he would actually. Yeah, he, um, and the movement of Sebastian, I really was impressed. That I really like. I really liked his movements. That uh, sort of made me think of a spider a little bit, which. Um, uh, yeah, they are crabs. Kind of have similarities to spiders a little. Bit. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I really like uh, that how it looked, you know, using the real crab there. Yeah. And also the way they make his facial movements move, especially you, when you see him close up. Yeah. It's his mouth movement, eyes, everything. It's 
ooh boy. It's like, almost look human. Yeah, and he's and he's still a realistic crab. It's, that's why that's why I say he's the most impressive of the sea animals there. Yes, because he expressed more facial expression. Mm hmm And and a good choice too, seeing how he has to be Triton's main guy there. Yes, it's almost like his right hand man. Uh, except he's his right hand crab. Yeah. <laughs> So yeah, good. Yeah, I gotta give I I gotta give you uh, people behind the designs of all these animals and especially Sebastian. Yes. Man, y'all. So yeah, I see why there's so many of y'all on that on that team. Yeah. <laughs> Cause yeah, I I can almost it's almost like it's almost like they gave each person in the animation department. Yeah. A piece of something to animate. Like okay, well okay, I'll do this piece. He does this piece. She does that piece. Yeah. Like, almost like. Like like they having to operate all these things, uh, like say Sebastian, he might have five people operating him. Yeah, <laughs> I'll I also give him credit for the people who made their tails look completely real instead of them wearing mermaid merpit may costume. Oh yeah, they that's and put them in the actual ocean. That's a good C, That's some good CGI because you really yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I I don't understand why people uh, talk about who is bad CGI because. You hardly, yeah, you you know they're using CGI because you know for the underwater scenes, right? But when you see it in action, it's it's kind of hard to t it, it looks realistic where you, um, where you know you actually would believe these are real. Yeah, if they did film the underwater scenes in the actual underwater, it'll be difficult for them to talk. Mm. And then not to mention uh, this sort of because you've had this sort of makes you reminisce of movies. Years ago, that 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 done this. It's almost like a updated version of, of movies you've seen years ago, like just like Splash. Yeah, when they do the underwater scene, you know, seeing them speaking. Oh yeah. <laughs> just swimming around because they're in mer but they're in, because they're in costumes. There's no CGI involved. Oh yeah. So see now, yeah, we've 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 evolved yes. what we could do, what we could really do, um, bring this to life more so. Yeah. And if they if they did speak, they would just speak in their mind, mm -hmm. underwater. Pretty, uh, pretty much, um, yeah. That's that sort of like something we're about to get to. Yeah. Uh. So yeah, we get that as well as, um, uh, of course, yeah. You know, she saves Eric from the wreckage. Yeah. <laughs> yes. You get that of her, you know, in the sunlight, him seeing her. Yes. Boy, that was really sweet there, <laughs> especially to place their hand on his face and stuff. Yeah, and Eric's vision, it was blurry. Yeah, see, it. see, see uh, there is a little truth to how it matters. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> this, this is what I, yeah, what Eric's, when Eric sees Ariel like that. Yeah. Uh, pretty much, pretty, pretty much, uh, pretty much uh, what I wake up to most of my mornings. Yeah. How you how you look most of the mornings? Yeah. Game. <laughs> I know if I was Ariel, my hair would be pink and curly. Oh yeah. Yeah, pink. So and like a bubbleina. Yes. Yep. Like it's yeah. like a little bubbleina. Yeah. Make sure y'all get make sure y'all get her books as well. Yeah. Five books. <laughs> Five. Here's the bubbleina seven dollars yeah. each. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> I have to put that out there. <laughs> Bubbleina would like bub Bubbleina would be really would be really starstruck with this. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And then of course, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, and she also found this Prince Eric statue. Oh yes, there was that. I noticed. I noticed Prince Eric's statue looked sort of smaller compared to the one in the animated version. Oh yeah. <laughs> Like, like in the animated version, the Prince Eric statue is is way bigger than Ariel herself. Mm. However, regardless of the size, yeah, Triton didn't take so well to that. Yeah, speaking of Triton, I know he doesn't yell. He just expresses anger in a different way. He just doesn't yell. Yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah, like they yeah. toned down his character a little. In a way, he's still kind of. Like I say, you know, there's always a few little differences when they do these things. Yeah, you know. <laughs> yeah, and I noticed this version of Ariel don't cry too much. 
like yeah, compared yeah. to the animated version. Yeah, good. You notice, know, like we mentioned before with the song, yeah, she's she had more anger expressions than sadness. Yes. Yeah, and especially a lot of the scenes, you know, dealing with like, Daddy, I, Daddy, what's why don't you want me to go to the surface? It's like Eric. It's like that. Like the live action Ariel matures. She's more mature than the animated version. Mm -hmm. No offense to Jody Benson, though. I'm just saying. Yeah. <laughs> just saying. Just, just, just pointing out the differences is all. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We, we still love you, Jody. <laughs> yeah. Since I grew up with the original. Oh yeah. See now we got two. <laughs> yeah. We got, we got two now, and and Jody did make a cameo in this. Yes. Yeah. Oh, uh, matter of fact. Um. Oh, uh, matter of fact. Running across some Google articles, yeah, she did give Haley Berry some really good, uh, good, uh, good words of passing this torch. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, yep. Yeah, uh. Of course, you get the Triton scene of him destroying everything in her of her collectibles. There. It's like he destroyed most of it instead of all of it. Most of the most of the trash instead of all of it. Yeah, and uh, so um, also, did you get sort of a Jason Moa vibe with with the King? Yeah, even though that's not him. Yeah, so they, I um, uh, I know there was a what if I imagine Chris Hemworth playing him because of Thor. Yes, but yeah, um, but if you go by the fact, you know, obviously he's got to be a little older. Yeah. Jason Moa would have been able to pull off that look, I think. So, look, the actor who playing King Shark, he looked like he's from South America. Oh, yeah. Yeah, the way he looks. I think, yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, if they, uh, yeah, like, nothing against the actor that played it, but yeah, in a what-if scenario, <laughs> Jason Moa, I, I could definitely have seen Jason Moa being, uh, being him now. <laughs> yeah. As with Ursula, let's just say they almost the live action Ur Ursula as well as the anime Ursula almost look way si almost look similar, mm -hmm. except the live action Ursula have long sleeves, and the uh, then in the anime Ursula she has a halter top. Like, oh yeah. yeah, they look similar with the f especially with the face. There, um, if y'all know, let me know in the comments because I know. Uh, I've heard, I forgot what they said, but I heard mention of uh, that sh that the actress playing Ursula has been from uh, some other movies and possibly a, a, t a well-known TV series somewhere. Yeah. yeah well, she's she's been around. Oh yeah. She's gone for a lot. But she she's she's around. Yeah. She sort of make the way she looks. She sort of made me look made me think of someone from say shows like possibly uh, Friends or Frasier. Oh yeah, uh, shows from the nineties. Yeah, those type, those kind of shows there. Yeah. <laughs> or, or like someone you may have seen on this is a really old show, The Nanny. I think I've seen a few episodes, but don't remember much of them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a like, uh, The Nanny and Fred. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you remember? Yeah, they animated, they animated opening. <laughs> yeah, and then to the live action. Mm hmm. Yep. Um. I noticed Flap and, and her her minions don't really talk in this movie. Sort of like Iago. Yeah. I think they try to make them like act, actual domestic eels. Mm. That just don't talk. So the only ones that they did make talk was Sebastian, Scuttle, and Flounder. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I guess. So it looked like you got a mix of domestic and anthropomorphic sea creatures a little bit. Yeah. As for, as for when when she made the deal to Ariel. Instead of instead of making her making Ariel host her slave, she just straight up kills her. Yeah, she just yeah. This She's a murderer. Big big warning to everybody. Yeah, um, yeah. Ursula's bad in anime, but she is darker here. <laughs> just really almost dark. almost similar to the live action Christian. Um, almost similar to the Christian Hans version, the original, except to see which in the Hans Christian the Anderson version don't kill. She just, she just tell him you're just gonna turn the sea foam. That's it. Just natural death for the mer people. Mm -hmm. Sea foam. Yep. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if yeah. they don't get, 
if they don't get what they want. Yeah, yeah, you straight up. Yeah, she told you that she was holding some skulls in that poor unfortunate souls number. <laughs> yeah, skulls of act, skulls of merfolk. Mm -hmm. And then, oh, uh, and she was really extremely persuasive there. Yeah. <laughs> she she practically uh, forced Ariel into this deal. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, instead of making her sign a contract, Ariel had to give up one of her scales. Ouch! Yeah. It's almost like a person giving up their giving up some of their blood. Right. And for I, a price. I'm assuming that when she got made into a human, that that scar could have been still on. Because when she turned back to a mermaid later, yeah. uh, you see that scar still there yeah. when when they're talking to Triton. Um, so um, I imagine that scar was probably on the legs of but you know, obviously we weren't going to see it because of the dresses that she was wearing. Yes. Plus, when she transformed into a human, she had, she had the ability to swim on her own as, without having assistance. She was able to swim on her own. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I know she, she. I know she can't breathe under. I know she can't breathe under waters, since her voice was taken away. But she has the ability to swim on her own without assistance in the live-action version. There is one thing that <clears throat> Ursula did to her that almost as if she took precaution from. Uh, that was different from the animated Ursula. Yeah. Um, not only did she take her voice, but she also messed with her memories a bit. Oh, or took she, her memory. Right, I remember she said uh, the princess got to kiss you in three days, true love's kiss. But she messed with Ariel's memories a bit as a safe fail where Ariel in human form uh, had trouble remembering the deal, the kiss deal. Oh. Yeah, even with Sebastian them trying to remind her. <laughs> oh boy. Yeah. Um, and, I, she, and I know she was rescued by a random fisherman. Oh yes, and I wonder. I wonder if that precaution, which um, uh, that, which I think his he his he did their parody of the animated Little Mermaid, how it should have ended. I think the live action had already been made when they put theirs out. Yeah. But it's almost as if they took a note from his he because of uh, he's like, okay, give me your voice. And, oh, uh, what's your name? And in the his he parody, Ariel writes. The, my name is Ariel. I lost my voice to a sea witch to meet you because you're hot. <laughs> and, and I can get my voice back if if we kiss. True love. Well, all right then. <laughs> How was I supposed to know she would be able to write? Because she signed the contract. Oops. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So, yeah, you have to write your name. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, so it's almost like they took a page from that. And in this case, okay, well, let's just mess with her memory a little bit so she won't even remember what she's up there for. <laughs> well, partly. Partly. It sort of came on and off because you get her singing in her mind an extra song. Yes, about, about her first time being in the human world. And there's even a song given to Eric, too. Yes. Even though in the animated version, Eric doesn't sing at all. Sort of. The way he sang kind of made me think of Robert from Disenchanted. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, from that movie, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Yeah, so, uh... And, yeah, that's where, um... And, of course... Um, you get a little extra, you get some extra, just like they did with Aladdin and Jasmine in the live action. Yeah. They add some extra bonding with Ariel and Eric in his treasure room. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. With, uh, the different, because he's collected different stuff. Another thing that makes him have something in common with Ariel. That he wants to be free. Yeah. And he has an overprotective mother. Isn't that funny? Over, the mother, uh, oh, I don't know who that is. Uh, the son, the, the man, has no protective mother. The girl has no protective father. Yes. Funny how that works. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, which, which that does be the case in most, in, uh, even real life scenarios. Yes. Yeah, uh, sort of. 
you know, whole protective because a uh, friend of mine that I used to work with said, yes. I hate I hate to say it, Gabe. I gotta be honest. Yeah, I have a daughter. Yeah, I'm gonna be kind of overprotective there. <laughs> now, Ariel, in a human form, reminds me of a kid exploring different things for the very first time. Oh yes, I, I like yeah, like like a kid. Mm, sort of, sort of like when I first started dating you. Yeah, <laughs> she was she was exploring all the street for and everything. Hmm. <laughs> wow. <laughs> There's a part of her eating the soap bar oh, and makes his food. Oh dear, uh, Ariel. That's only only time a person has ever had soap in their mouth is when they is when they said a bad word, like in Christmas Story. At least smell it first before eating it. Yeah, but I I'm, understand you're. I, I I understand you're a fish out of water, but smell before you eat. See. Like I say, she probably didn't think of that there. Yes, because it is her first time being in the human world. She still try to have a lot to learn. Yeah, it's better, and I think she ate some flowers too in one yeah. thing. <laughs> <laughs> Must be edible flowers. Possibly, and then, and yeah, I kind of, I kind of could understand the flowers one because yeah, underwater you do have some edible sea plants there. Yes. Mm hmm. Like kelp, uh, you know, like kelp there and stuff like that. Yeah, I like I like when Grimms when it Grimms to be an easygoing guy. Eric's is Eric's. Oh is yeah. Grimsby. he's easygoing. I think a lot of that's because of the the queen there, because yes. in the animated one it was just him and Eric. Yes. So he was kind of having to be a parent too. Yeah. Yeah, but here, yeah, he's just sort of you know the assistant to the parent. Yeah. At least they don't have the song number with the French chef. And oh, Sebastian in the middle. Probably uh they I think they sort of made um made up for that with all, with some of the stuff Ariel saw when she saw the fish and stuff. Yes. And as she was singing in her mind. Yeah. Is this what we are? Food for them. Yeah, she and she looked nervous and scared mm -hmm. on the inside. Yeah, and I def uh, yeah, like you say, definitely like a like a child, especially with her interactions with Eric there. Yeah, and and I like Eric's patience with her. Oh yeah, cause he, I think Eric saw a lot of himself in her. Yeah, cause like I say, that's that's one thing I really like. They really um. Cause, um, and then they've done this with with many of the live action remakes, uh, like a like Aladdin Jasmine. You know they connected them more by adding Jasmine in that market chase scene, yeah, uh, and having them talk. You know, in the scene, you know when uh, oh yeah, leading right to the scene when they first talk in the animated movie. Yeah, um, they did that with let's see, it was Aladdin Jasmine. Um, uh, I think it was another one they did that. Uh, tried to make more of a connection. Um, another live action remake. I was trying to think. Uh, I know Lion King already had that because Timba and Nala were already. Without Cinderella. Yes, yes, that's what I was trying to think of. Uh, with her and the prince. Yeah, they met before the ball. Yeah. Did she didn't even know that that was the prince she was talking to, and they, you know, had that conversation. Uh, he didn't even tell her that he was the prince because. Sort of like Akeem in coming to America, you know, when he became a common man. Yeah. To see who would love him just as he is and not because I'm a prince. Yeah. Yeah. I like that, I like that angle, yeah. You know, re that, that really strengthens the whole thing of true love. Because, yeah, you like, you, just like me and you, you know, yeah. we're just cool with each other like we are. I like when they think outside of Bosnia. The original Little Mermaids took place in Europe, but the live action took place in the Caribbean. Oh yes, yeah they. Yeah, they dance outside. That yeah. also explains the diverse culture in yes. despite despite the time period that it takes place in. Yes. That explains why so like you got um, an African American queen, and probably some of, some of y'all probably wondering. Like, wait, if she's African-American, how... Or just an African queen in general. Right. Oh, African queen, I'm sorry. Yes. Yeah. Like, how did the world she get Eric? She adopted him. Um, 
Yeah, because they, they even explained this. Eric was washed up in a storm there. Much much like Air much like uh Ariel when she became human. Yes. Yeah, um at least you remember in the anime they assumed that she was washed up in a storm. Not only that, but found in a ship found from but came from a shipwreck. Yes, so yeah, that's another another little connection. Hmm. Um and I know you I know one of the shopkeepers was Ariel's original voice actress. Yes, Jody Benson. Man. And she and Air and Ariel was using the fork as as a comb and people were looking at her weird. I wonder if Jody Benson had any flashbacks. Like, huh? Oh, where have I seen this before? And then all of a sudden you go in Jody Benson's mind and see the animated little mermaid. Oh. <laughs> that scene at the dinner table. Like, hmm. Oh. I think it makes homage to the dinner scene table. Yep, that's that's why I was saying. I wonder if she had a flashback. <laughs> yeah, when she gave her the fork. Uh huh. And people looking at her weird, like, huh? And then Ariel put the fork down. That was actually I I actually liked that they that they did to sort of give Jody Benson some recognition there. Yes. Uh, sort of like what they do with Stan Lee and his Marvel film before he passed. Yes. And also. Um, before he passed, uh, Jason David Frank and, yeah. and Amy Jo Johnson making a cameo in this 2017 Power Rangers movie. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Um, but yeah, they have a really good montage scene of that uh, riding, you know, through everywhere. The, um, yes. Really. All over the Caribbean islands. And you got a lot of people that they encounter and stuff like that. Um, and having their castle located in the Caribbean. And even get to interact with some of the people, like in a little dancing song. Remember how Ariel did dance in one of the Yeah, in the sea. Right. It's like a live action. It's like a human version of Under the Sea with humans. Oh, yes. <laughs> and then, of course, so how are they going to get to the boat scene? Because uh, in the animated, you know, they just, they were just in the boat. Yes. Well, let's let Scuttle take Eric's hat that he recently found and have him chase Scuttle to get it back. <laughs> and he drops the hat in the boat. <laughs> Give him the hint. Yeah, and Ariel immediately gets in there, and she kind of she just sort of looks up at Ariel like, and first, and Eric being that's another good thing of him being you know spontaneous and everything. Yes, and daring. Right. So yeah, he he picks up on her looking at him and the boat. Like, hmm. Hey, why not? <laughs> Let's go on a boat ride. At night. Yeah. <laughs> Cause you saw how he liked the boat rides earlier in the movie. Yes. Being on voyages and stuff. Yes. So yeah, little boat ride. Yeah, I'll take that. <laughs> I like it when Ariel hints her hints about her name after seeing the star. Oh, that was that was actually a pretty good little uh, a neat thing. Um, another sort of sort of also made me think of his he with the writing in the sand. Yes. So it's. It almost, almost kind of like sign language. Yeah. But what they did, they had them looking at the stars with the constellations and stuff. So she pointed at what he called Aries. Yes. And sort of kept kind of putting her finger on his lip. Aries. Oh, Ariel. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And he caught on quick. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Gotta give. Gotta give my boy props there for picking up on that there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> he was definitely in love there. Mm. Yeah. Kinda like me. Yes. <laughs> yeah, especially especially the finger on his lips there. Mm. <laughs> that, so so it gave me some ideals. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so uh we'll we'll get yeah, we'll get that later. <laughs> Anywho, <laughs> um, you get the uh, Ursula, kiss the, yeah, kiss the girl, the kiss of the girl number, and then Ursula being angry. Yep, she, she no like you back there. And transforms into Vanessa. I, I noticed Ursula was even more upset in this version because, like I say, remember the fail save she put on her memory. Yeah. So yeah. So that that really that made even more sense of why she was more upset than the animated Ursula. Yeah. But she was because she wasn't even she wasn't even thinking straight, looking through her stuff, <laughs> like because she was so upset she couldn't even find her potion right away to make to 
you know, do what she was going to do to herself. Like, where are you at? Where are you at? So, I said, maybe. Well, Yzma, maybe if you labeled your potions. Yeah. <laughs> kind of made me think of Yzma in that scene. She found one specific potion that make her completely human. And it looks like an embryo of a human. Oh. An embryo. Oh, yeah. The, because the way it's shaped. I think that's a potion of, of a human. Yep. And, and then drop it in her cauldron. And she even made sort of an entrance like Ariel on the rock when she was sitting on it singing there. Yes. And yeah, that, uh, the siren effect on them there. Yes. Oh, and also one thing we forgot to point out. Her and Triton are related. Yes. They, you remember, uh, if though, any of y'all that's watched the animated one before this movie, uh, you probably have heard people talk about how it was hinted at that they were related. Yeah. And they were going to put that in there, but they cut it out of the film. Yes. Like, what you had hints of it, which they, when I lived in the palace, and people sort of, some, some people caught on to this. So, live action, it was like, it was like, okay. Yeah, we ain't gonna hide it. Yeah, they related. <laughs> yeah, they they just they just tell you straightforward. They related. They, and they find it is older than Ursula. Right, and they they probably they probably figured a lot of us that grew up with the animated probably already knew this. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, they they know. <laughs> so yeah, a lot of us probably weren't surprised. Yeah, I know that's a twist. And that also means, um, you know. Ursula is labeled as a sea witch. Yes. But no let's uh but know this. She's not a sea witch by birth. The sea witch is a label on her. By birth, she's practically a goddess. Yes. Like uh because remember Triton is, is a sea god, lowercase g. So that makes Ursula a goddess. Yeah. And she became the sea witch because the way they were because the way she was mistreated, and the, and she and also dabbling into dark magic and stuff. Yeah. Yes. Mm. So, yeah, we uh, so yeah, she becomes Vanessa, of course. And one thing they did with the mind control part on Eric, they sort of they sort of took a page from Descendants too. Yes. Uh, remember now? Remember in the animated, he was like, "We had to get married at once." Uh -huh. Just completely, so, like, he was just like a drone almost. Yes. Here, the reason I say they did like Descendants too, because if remember when Uma had spelled Ben. Yes. When Uma uh, Uma had King, uh, had Ben under her control, he still was speaking like a regular person. Like Mal, I'm so sorry, but there's something I have to tell you. Hmm. Yeah, he's st yeah. You did so. You didn't know that un until later when Uma showed up, and then I was like, "Wait a minute, son. he's been spelled." <laughs> yes. So yeah, he was. Oh uh, yeah, they did kind of like that. Um, I was also mixed with the spell was kind of seemed like it was on and off. Yeah, like he, like he somewhat was half aware of himself, but. Certain things he was doing, like, wait, why am I doing this? What's going on? Plus, I know is he have doubts. Yes, that's what. So yeah, yeah, he, it's sort of like like get outs uh, yes. concept. He he was sort of in the he was halfway in the sunken place. Yeah. Uh, he knew he he could see what he was doing, but he didn't know why he was doing it. Yeah, and you mentioned about the rap number. Oh yes, when uh, Scuttle woke Ariel up, thinking yes. thinking that he was gonna propose to Ariel at that moment. Yeah, yeah, it was. Like, <laughs> Did you hear that? <laughs> and then her and Sebastian joins in with her. <laughs> yes. Yeah, it was actually pretty funny, and it, it it makes sense with Scuttle's character the way they write her there. Yes. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense with her with her character. <laughs> yes. Hmm. And probably was probably since her actress is a rapper that probably was in her contract. Yes, her rap. Yeah, I gotta do a rap number. And I think she's also Asian. Oh. Well that's an interesting feat there. Yeah. So, an Asian an Asian who can rap. So obviously, you know, us, you know, as you know, African American, we we rap. Uh we got vanilla ice. Yes, as well as Eminem. Mm -hmm. We got uh, Caucasian rappers like them. Now we got Asian rappers. 
was was there might be Mexican rappers somewhere. Yeah, probably is. Um, and with the way they speak, you know, like when they when they you know like the the music when they be singing their different songs and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, I could definitely see a Mexican rapper. Yes. Yeah, I think that would be easy for them. Yeah. Yeah, that they they probably I think they would have they I think some of them could have that skill. Yeah. Um, might who knows might in the future probably get a Japanese or a Chinese rapper. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like oh yeah, it's my Asian, but um, maybe like uh, maybe a French rapper. Who know, rappers coming on ethnicities right mm -hmm. by now. Yeah, don't have to. Yeah, I don't have to be stuck with one with with one uh, with one brand. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the part when Ariel was depressed, there's you could you could hear her in her mind singing a sad version of Part of Your World. Oh yeah, sort of, sort yeah. of like how they had that other version of uh, what that song. Um, um say oh, um, the song in the Latin uh. What are you saying? Riff rap. Oh yeah. Street rap. Yeah, that um yeah, yeah. that one, yeah. <laughs> one jump. That's one jump ahead, yeah. Yeah. It was a reprise of that. Yeah, a sad version. Mm -hmm. And I noticed when she's depressed, she just laying down there depressed. I don't think she didn't cry much. She just laying down there depressed. She sort of had the Will Smith effect of emotion there. Yes. Yeah, because you know like Will he has broken down sometimes, but most of the time you ever notice, uh, even in his emotional state, he uh, part uh, you just uh, you just hear it, and when he talks, there. Yeah. yeah, I think they were going by the quote of Hans Christian Andersen, stated that, "But a mermaid has no tears, therefore, she, therefore she suffers so much more." And we see that in the movie. You don't see her cry that much. I think that's why. But you see her suffer more when she can't get to the prince. Yeah. Okay. Yes. It's all right. Oh, uh, yeah. I guess. I guess that'd be my. I guess besides flounder, that's my other nitpick. Yes. Uh, yeah. I mean, the original little little yeah. mermaid. Story. Yeah, using that reference. Yeah. Dude, I'm, I'm like this. If you're crying, if you're crying, there's tears. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I don't. Especially I don't, if you cry really, if, especially when you cry really hard. Yeah, I don't care what um, human mermaid, any kind of magical being, you're gonna, you're gonna cry. You A know, mermaid has if, no if you're tears. Sad, yeah. Mm. If you have emotion, you have to have tears. Right. I mean, they're they're still living. <laughs> yes, living beings. Mm -hmm. And I hated the concept of the original Hans Christian Andersen version when when mer people don't have souls, yeah. but they live but they live over three hundred years. Yeah, living a long time. I mean, okay, yeah, they're magical beings, but I mean, come on, they they not like not like you know dogs or cats or something like that, <laughs> or or any animal in general. Right. This. Yeah. Of course, uh, unlike the now, unlike the animated, you know how they had they went right away to the wedding on the boat. Yes. This one, they kind of went for a more realistic feel, which I don't have a problem with. Um, yes. They, they just they were just together, and the mother suggested uh, like handing Eric uh, a ring from her mother. Yes. Like you know, hinting for him to propose. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. So, yeah, I yeah I actually this actually is. Pretty good, you know. Giving him more time to be with the be with right, the yeah. Even even under a spell, yeah. It was, which is why, yeah, you had the, the whole doubt going back and forth in him, yeah. Which was a uh, pretty realistic there, and he was he still had feelings, uh, like he was wondering where Ariel had went there. Yes. So yeah, he was he was still partly there. <laughs> yeah, I like when Ariel had could fight fight for what she believed. Oh in, yes, trying yes. to fight back. When Scuttle and Sebastian tell her what's going on. Yeah, and, and fighting with Vanessa and uh, getting her voice back. <laughs> imagine, imagine us, imagine in the future uh, Bubbleina busting into the into Serena's lair, going at it with her. Yes. Oh boy. <laughs> oh, or like Sailor Moon and Queen Beryl. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, she went right at uh, the lair. <laughs> and 
and they still on land. And you still, and you still got scuttled them helping out there. Before I, I think they they started the attack before Ariel got there. Yes. yes. And I like the part when they just stayed on land. Oh yes, and yeah, and then of course she gets her voice back, and and they try to kiss each other until the sunset. Yep, and I do, and just like the animated version, yep. You know, Eric, he's, um, I mean, yeah, it did surprise him, don't get me wrong. He was he was still in shock. But he does give up. Right, and he does, he's not afraid of her, though. He's just, you know, oh, you're a mermaid, wow. <laughs> like, you know, just shocked to find out, but yeah, he's not scared of her, though. Yeah. And probably the same, I think, I, now, actually, I think with the, uh, this is why they put in about the whole, you know, the gods are against us. Yeah. This explains why the other people were, even even before Ursula showed up, why they got frightened when they saw Ariel's mermaid form because, you know, of the whole thing with sirens and stuff. Yes. It wasn't. It wasn't. They didn't. It wasn't that they thought they were ugly or monsters, but they thought, you know, that the gods in general of the sea were trying to kill. Were trying to kill them. Like uh, like the mighty trident there. Yes. Yeah. So that that was it was it was uh, it was a thing of fearing the power that they could possibly possess. Yes. I know they mentioned about mermaid gifts, which is their voices. Mm-hmm. Yep. And of course, yeah, Ursula made a really big scene when she transformed from Vanessa form. Yes. Oh dear. <laughs> Now that now now that's scary. <laughs> if you fought that scary way until they get to the battle scene. Oh boy. Once King Trident have to give up his trident for Ursula. Yeah, oh boy. In they, order to save Earl Ariel. They oh boy, that was that was a graphic scene with the eels entangling. They they did it to Ariel first, then they went over the Triton after he gave up the Triton. Yeah, straight up killed him. Oh boy! Yeah. And they, and of course, like so many, like so many characters we've seen in movies, they have to do the Jesus pose. Yes. And Ariel's reaction went from sad for a while, and then straight up angry that she wanted to fight Ursula. Mm -hmm. Like you killed my father. And she was all, she was already upset with Ursula before in Vanessa form. Yes. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm a, I'm already ticked off. This is not you you uh as as right out saying Beast Wars, I'm in a bad mood. <laughs> a very bad mood. <laughs> but of course, and just like the just like the animated movie, Eric tries to help out, of course. <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he and and he is and it really makes him more effective with the you know, his mother and the people afraid of them. I'm like, no, Eric, don't do it. He's, and he's still running after to get to Ariel. Yeah. He, matter of fact, there was even a brief moment when Ursula transformed. He stood, he, when he immediately saw that happening, he immediately stood in front of Ariel despite her being a mermaid. Yes. Like, he, he instantly knew, like, like, uh uh. Nope. <laughs> you ain't hurting her. You have to get with me first. Uh huh. Sort of. Um, yep. Yeah, pretty. Um, sort of like Silver Bolt defending Black Arachnia. <laughs> so, yeah, and uh, I, uh, you do get that classic scene, like an anime, where uh, when she tried to, when those eels, uh, when, uh, when she was trying to blast Eric, yeah. of of uh, Ariel pulling at Ursula's head. Yeah. Like, and zapping her minions. <laughs> oh, my poopsies. And she gets mad. Uh, it became bigger. Make my Ursula grow. <laughs> <laughs> no. You know, it also made me think of, what, like you mentioned, her getting angry. Yes. Ivan Ooze <laughs> from Power Rangers. Yeah. When she, now I'm beginning to get angry. <laughs> Yeah, and he infused himself with one of those insect robots. Yeah. Yeah, so... Yeah, you get giant size Ursula. I, which one you think uh, think was bigger, the live-action or the cartoon giant Ursula? 
I would say the live action version because she looked more creepier and scary. Think think that one was bigger? Well, they can't they can't be equal. Oh, they oh okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sort of yeah. equal like. It was kind of, I, I kind of, it kind of, the way, and maybe it might have been the camera shots there. Yeah. It was almost looking as if Ursa was bigger in the live action there. Yeah. Yeah, and they, they, uh, they really went heavy on those storm effects there. Yes. Oof. Almost man. looked realistic. And you know how Eric was, um, you know, they faced Ursula together, and Eric was the one that drove the ship into Ursula. And I see Ariel operating the ship. Yep. <laughs> yep. It looks uh, like she's starting to figure out about humans. Mm-hmm. That, um, which I think she, um, they, I think is shown with the fisherman that she may have probably observed him. Yeah. And possibly also observed Eric's crew before, remember when she had to rescue Eric. Yeah. Yeah, she may have observed from there too. There, so, yeah. And Ursula gets popped like a balloon, <laughs> stabbed like Phil Coulson. <laughs> yes, and you see King Trident Trident falling down, and he's and King Trident is back to life because of the magic of his strike. Yeah. Yes. Ooh, that was a relief. <laughs> since since um, King Trident gave up her life to save Ariel. It's, it's, vice, it's vice versa now since Ariel saved King Trident's life. Right, and they. Yep. Yeah. And of course, you get the uh, ending where he does make uh, give Ariel what she wants there. Yes. To be human. And of course, they don't now. They sort of cut out, you know, the golden interest where she walked out the water. There. In a beautiful dress. Yep. But. Eh, but you know, she she um she came out because the dog ran to her. Yeah, she's wearing that same dress when she first went into the human world. That same dress. Mm-hmm. That was still nice though. <laughs> yeah. I know she wore that same dress throughout the entire film when she became human, instead of an, an, instead of wearing a different dress from this animated version. And they did end it with a dress from the anime, which was the pink one, yeah. Yeah, but different. Mm -hmm. so but they, but no wedding dress. Yes, they uh, so they sort of they sort of gave you the they sort of pulled an Aladdin on us. Yeah, you know why I say that? Why is that? Well, the animated version of Aladdin, it um, it hinted that they got married. Yeah. You know, they just rolled on the carpet, but they didn't really have you didn't really see a ceremony yet. Yeah, and that's why in Return of Jafar in the animated series they were not they were not married yet. And they were getting to know each other, and they got married in King of Thieves. Yes, but I, I guess in this version, they just, they still gave more time to know each other before the, the marriage. Which is what... Yeah, like, no, like learning about the world more. Yeah, it just, yeah, because Eric said he wanted to, yeah, get out there, and so, and we know Ariel wants to get out there. And each of their parents give them their blessing. Mm-hmm. As well as respecting their wishes. And we get to see a, a really good shot of all the merfolk and Eric's kingdom, uh, the humans of Eric's kingdom there. United. Mm -hmm. just, and, er and Eric stated that we're just going to live in uncharted waters. So it's a good way that they can be between the two worlds there. Yeah, I know. I saw a pirate ship and I f think it might be a hint that's, that's where they're going to live. Just sailing around the world. Yes. So they just gotta travel together. Yep. In the end. Yep. I think the the actual marriage will just come later after they, after they traveling all over the world. After they've uh, yeah. been together, or like with me and you, you know, we just have just give more t give them more time. We had about about because uh, I I met her in college when I turned eighteen. Then she was twenty. So we uh, it was about five. As Jimmy Fox say five years before we actually went down the aisle. Yes. Oh, yeah. Um, of course, I had proposed to her, obviously, before then, but yeah, we had, but yeah, we were uh, together in a relationship uh, from girl, from girl, from boyfriend to girlfriend, then to fiance at for a total of five years. Mm. Yep, yeah, so, yeah, we had definitely 
Um, and yeah, still, and like any married couple, yeah, there was still things that we had that got used to in the first year, and you know, even up to now. But we did get a lot of, but there was a lot of stuff we did learn before getting in there, though. Yeah. So, yeah, there was, so yeah, definitely a uh, good, a good send-off of healthy relation building there. Yeah. Kudos to Disney for that there, because, yeah, um, I know they said three days, get true love's kiss, but, yeah, yeah, sure, they got that, but. Now, now, now we have to get to know each other having that kiss, yeah. I think it's bringing, I think it's bringing a reference to the original Hans Christian Andersen version where the mermaid spent more time with the prince. Yep, except, uh, except what makes it, um, and I gotta say, that I did, that, that was, that was the one thing I did like, one thing I liked in, in the original version, one thing, that they, that they were with each other more. Yes. Instead of the free day rule. Right. Which is why I really despised it when, oh, and it, uh, this the other girl shows up. She's not even the one that saved Eric, but Eric thinks that. And like, oh, you're the one that saved me. Okay, I'll go marry you. And, and the prince was a jerk in the original. Yeah. Hans and, Christian Anderson version. And get and no, the girl wasn't the the woman was not the sea witch in disguise. It wasn't and it wasn't no magic spell. It's just hi, I'm and say like, I'm another girl. You must have saved me. Um, okay, and yeah, I'll say I did. You who you marry me? Okay. <laughs> yeah, after you got to know the mermaid. <laughs> yeah, that's that's like That'd be like, yeah, and they say, well, it's supposed to be like reality where you don't always get what you want. Yeah, I get that, because it's, it's like, I, it's like all, a lot of us don't always get what we want, but this is, this is the, um, uh, yeah, if you want to go realistic, think about if, okay, I've gotten to know Christina yes. uh, for like a year or two, and then just say, for instance, all of a sudden, uh, out of the blue, you know, uh, cause you know, uh, a lot of us have celebrity, you know, you know, celebrities that we look up to when we're growing up and stuff. Yeah. All of a, um, all of a sudden, uh, a ra this random celebrity like say Mara Wilson or Kyla Pratt show up. Yeah. Hey, I seen you when I was a kid growing up. Let's get married. But I never, but I, but I never got to know either one of them though. Because you just know them by the by TV and yeah, movies, but I not just meeting them in person. Right, but I've actually and I've actually spent time with Christina yeah. for a year or two. What mm -hmm. sense is that gonna make? It don't make sense. <laughs> yeah, would it would make more it make more sense for me to for, for for me to pop the question to her? Yes. Which I did, and here we are. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> See, this is reality. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, that's. And that's that's why Disney wins <laughs> yes. in both live in both animated and their live action takes. <laughs> then the original. Uh huh. I'm sorry. I'm, I, I, I'm sorry, Christian. Uh, I know. Like I guess you had a different vision on that, but yeah, I that yeah, it, it just it just doesn't add up there. I mean. <laughs> and they are based on his actual life of how he really really felt. Mm -hmm. And putting his true feelings and his and the stories that he writes. Well, that may, yeah, like I say, you know, may, uh, that, yeah, I put this, and yeah, I put this way, yeah, it, it, for, for what he used to put that out there, yeah, but, especially, uh, one way I feel, why not, why not make, make, you know, your story a drama with real people? Yes. Cause yeah, that the mermaid comes up and then like the stuff with the sea foam and all that. No, 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 no. Yeah, like I like said, that, that 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 magic just don't work for me. <laughs> yeah, it don't it don't mesh with them. Yeah, but it's out there. So yeah, again, and it's been it's been done. Right, but at least we got better versions there. Yeah, which uh, we definitely. Now we may now while we don't recommend while we don't discourage people from going to see them, we all we, we would always encourage to go check it out. Yes. Now, like I say, obviously now obviously people are gonna have different opinions when they go see stuff there. 
But yeah, I always, I always encourage go check it out and get your opinion of it. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So go out there. And, so go out there and see that live action movie. <laughs> yeah. Don't don't let the and don't and don't let them haters get in your head yet. Mm. <laughs> At least get see it for yourself and see what you think. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, and it's raining outside too, even though it's sunny out. Well, it might be gloomy outside. Mm. At least we able to see the movie before it rained. Oh yeah, it did, it did say it was gonna rain today. Yeah. Yes, we did have a great break from the rain. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. So, so, anything else you uh, liked about the movie? Then? Yeah, before the movie came out, they were they made a lot of controversies about them, as well as a lot of rumors that that the movie's gonna be pulled quickly because because of all the controversy and having the black actors as Ariel, mm. having the movie being pulled quickly because of that. But don't believe anything that you hear. Just just see the movie yourself. And overall, overall, the effects are so amazing. They look so real, especially when they made the merfolk look completely real instead of them wearing just complete costumes. Mm -hmm. And I like the story concept in general. And that's another that's another reason why I don't like the idea of people, you know, hating so bad to the point where they try to go with, you know, forcing their opinion on other people there. Uh, especially to the point where they force it in the media. Yes. <laughs> yeah, trying. Yeah, with the. Media, uh, yeah, see, and all of a sudden you, you just you just going like you go on Google to just say I go on Google to look up to look up something on Yu-Gi-Oh and all of a sudden I see an article about, uh, Little Mermaid might be getting pulled out of the game. <laughs> Seriously. I've heard that on opening week weekend they made like over a hundred million dollars on opening weekend. So yeah, these movies, these movies, are, these movies are making successes there. So uh, yeah, like I say, you know, keep it, keep up the good work, Disney. Don't let the, don't let these haters get get to you, Mickey. <laughs> yeah. I think maybe as time goes on, it might make over a billion. Who knows? Over mm -hmm. a billion dollars, like the Marvel movies. Yeah, I kind, I kind of get a Marvel feel from some of these remakes too. Yeah. Because. I think they're taking some of the stuff that they put into these Marvel films, effects and all that, yeah. and it's sort of seeping their way into these live action remakes of the Disney movies. Yeah. Yeah, like uh, when we went to see Aladdin, I said it felt it felt like it felt like they put Ma Aladdin in the MCU. <laughs> I also like the realism between Ar Ariel and Eric because they they want to get out there. Ariel want to explore the human world and. Eric wanna explore the sea the sea world mm -hmm. as well as his own world because of so many adventures. They just both wanna be free. And they got that in the end. Freedom. Yeah. I think the moral of this I think the main focus on the story is freedom. I can say freedom. Like get out there. Yeah. Like put yourself out there more. Kinda like and yeah. life, like life, is short to be in one, in one area. Mm, live and, your life to the fullest. Yeah, life is short, so you just have to explore the world more, as well as explore yourself more. I think you kind of relate to that freedom part, there. Yes. Mm. And I also like Ariel's maturity in a live-action version. Mm -hmm. No offense to the animated version. Yeah, I I put it this way: they yeah. they both have a um uh, uh in a way they both have maturity. It's just played differently. Um, yes. Like I say, I oh uh, I think the, the direction that Jody was given for when they did the Little Mermaid, you know, back then, um, uh, for the original animated movie, I think her direction was you know like I know she said she's a teenager there too. But they, I think they directed her in a way of, like, uh, like again, like an innocent child. Yes. You know, you know, being, you know, meek and innocent there. Yes. Uh, because, yeah, obviously, because they're marketing it to small little girls now. Sure. Right. So that's why it's G-rated. Right, and they, uh, and that, that was their way of thinking in terms of marketing now. But see, now, a lot of these remakes are being brought up. You still got kids going to see them. Don't get me wrong, 
But these, but a lot of these kids are their parents grew up with the with these animated movies. Yes. So a lot. So yeah, that's that's who's taking the, these kids in there now is parents who've probably seen the animated ones, new viewers. Uh, which yeah, because you know you got so many adult viewers that go to supposed kid films nowadays. Yes. Yeah, you you got so many adult viewers of 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 all these movies now. Yeah. So yeah, they they're catering now to a brighter audience. Is why you know some of the things are different, like you know, because they they got bigger audiences for these type of stuff. I noticed that all the live action Disney princesses not only gain maturity, but also they gain more independence towards themselves. Mm -hmm. Like they had, like they are more stronger right. than the ones in the, than the, their animated counterparts. Like you could look up to them more. And like you want, like they, like they are the heroes. And that's another thing, yeah. And a lot of that also has to do with your writers of the times, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, writers as well as, like I mentioned before, your directors. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Had Jody Benson probably would have been similar to this if 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 it was if her and Haley Berry was switched around. Yeah. That's probably what would have happened. Hey, Haley Berry would have been playing an innocent little child, and Jody would have been the one. Uh, with anger. Yeah. And I also like when they just think outside of the box that it doesn't have to be just one race all the time. It could just be multiple ethnicities. Yeah, we might end up getting we might end up getting a second reboot with an Asian little mermaid. Yeah. In Japan. Who knows? Yeah. I know all of Ariel's sisters are in a mixed race. They have different ethnicities. Mm, yep. Uh, yep, you never know. Yeah. It doesn't hurt to mix it up a bit. Mm -hmm. And we're tired of living inside the ordinary that we have to just live out of the ordinary. Be yeah. more spontaneous. That's why animes exist too. Yes. This, this is, this is uh, one, one of the reasons why you got animes uh, because that's one of their big things. It's just, hey, what if we did this? Okay, then you got this anime. You got that. There's um, a lot of animes out there. Right, yeah. We, they just, they, they, whatever, whatever comes to their mind, whether it be card games or digital creatures or pocket monsters, they do it. <laughs> well, well, it's people's, pe pe the stuff that people write, their stories, they based on not just their anim, an not just their imagination, but also the dreams that, that, also their dreams when they fall asleep, when they fell asleep, they're just based on their actual dreams of what they dream about. And then, and when they wake up to their dream, they write about it. Sort of like you and me. Yeah. Yeah, like I, like like how we write our stories, you know. Yes. It's yeah. a mix of imagination and dreams. Mm, cause there's a, well, yeah, cause yeah, um, cause, it, uh, cause there's a lot, a lot that comes to our mind with your Miyako and Bubbleina and other and even other things out outside of that. Yeah. You guys are gonna be in for some treat the more we keep writing <laughs> on that. There's an old saying that a mind is a terrible thing to waste because we need our minds to survive. Mm -hmm. And it's helped us to get through life. Yep. Depends on how we use it. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Anything else there? That's all I have. Oh, the, the movie's overall completely good and never disappoints. Definitely go check it out there. Yes. <laughs> and and uh, and and again, I said it before, I'm gonna say it again. Under the Sea with Sebastian and Ariel Duet, that was that was genius. Yeah. Uh -huh. And also and also as we wrap this up here, uh, say once again, uh thanks for the shout out to Hunter. Say uh remind that Hunter McClean. <laughs> The uh, the possible future Flash, <laughs> yeah. Uh, maybe maybe next year after the new uh, the new DCU. <laughs> if 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 that be, I guess we'll be having another manager at the store <laughs> while while he plays in the movies. <laughs> See? With with under James Gunn's uh, direction. <laughs> so yeah, just uh, only only thing I say. Um, uh, just in general, make them just like any movie, just like any movie, regardless of what it is, Disney, Marvel, make it good. Yeah. That's, make it good, make a good story. <laughs> 
And with that, y'all enjoy what you saw here in our interview. Definitely uh, like, share with your friends, uh, buy some of our available comic books to help support the channel and everything, as well as also supporting us on Patreon. And just like just like my boy Hunter and our previous sponsors, you can also support you can also support us by sponsoring by by sponsoring the video. Um, you you know you want to shout out like Hunter. Um, it's only uh, the minimum is five dollars for a sh for a shout out. You know for us to say hey what's up how you doing shout out. Mm -hmm. But if you got a got a little business like uh, like old boy King. Is barbecue shack now, and you want you want to get your business out there, advertised in the video, at a minimum of twenty dollars, and you can and and feel free you can you can give more than that for either one. Uh, I've had I had one give me a ten dollars for a shout out, <laughs> so yeah, you can give more. You, uh, you want to give us a hundred dollars for for either one of them? Hey, that's hey. Um, we we will we will be accepting of that, <laughs> very accepting. Just so, uh, but yeah, that's why that that's why I say the minimum, five dollars for shout out, twenty for the business. Yeah. There's no saying every little bit helps. Right. That way, that way, like I say, you know, that that way, you know, that that way you have you know you have a good reasonable price to start with. Now. Yes. <laughs> so, yep. With that, and and on Patreon. Minimum be a dollar a month, yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> take your pick. Uh, comics are seven dollars, and we will see y'all in the next video. Uh, probably gonna be a stream of what I of, of me going uh, what we gonna talk about in church on Sunday. So, till then, take care, everybody. Bye, everyone. <laughs>